Productions. We are joined by TCU head coach Sonny Dykes, along with student athletes Max Duggan and Dee Winters. Following an opening statement from Coach, we'll take questions for the student athletes. Coach, when you're ready, please. Yeah. Um, well, tough one tonight. I think anybody that saw that knew, um, could see that we, you know, certainly didn't play our best. Uh, you got to give Georgia a ton of credit. Um, you know they did a uh, they did a tremendous job of of uh, getting their team ready to play. Uh, those guys came out and played exceptionally well. They've got a very good football team. Um, you know, really talented. And uh, you know the thing that I again I was impressed about Georgia coming into the game is, you know, they played hard all the time and they played well and really had a lot of pride in their performance and the way they played. And and it uh, you could see it today. They did an excellent job. Thought their quarterback really played uh, an outstanding game. Tight end obviously played an outstanding game as well. And, you know, we just, look, we've got a good football team, and it was a tough one tonight. Um, we'll evaluate what happened. Uh, couldn't be more proud of uh, our football team, though, uh, and these, especially these two young men, men that are up here with me right now just for what they've meant to TCU football and uh, just what kind of people they are. And I think we're all disappointed and um, that we didn't, you know, we didn't play better and we didn't coach better and, you know, we didn't represent uh, our team better than we did tonight. Uh, but we'll learn from it and the next time we're on a stage like this, we'll handle it better. Thank you, Coach. Again, let's get questions for our two student athletes first and then uh, we'll go to Coach. So questions for our student athletes. We'll start right down here in the very front in the middle. Let me get you the mic. Uh, this question is for Max and D. Winters, Jamie Plunkett with Frogs today. Um, guys, I know that this isn't the result you wanted today, but when you look back on this season after being picked seventh in the Big 12 and everybody kind of overlooked you guys, how do you put into words, you know, finishing 13-2 and two with the Fiesta Bowl championship win? Yeah, you know, I think Coach Dyke said it. You know, tonight did not go the way we wanted to. Um, you know, disappointed in, in, in that aspect, but – you know, th tonight isn't going to, you know, take away from, from this season and, and, you know, what we were able to do um, as a program. I, I don't think that's going to define, you know, all, all the good memories and all the success that we had, you know, it, this season to, you know, project and, and put this program going in the right direction and moving forward. I think that was the biggest thing of, you know, or, this program's moving in the right way, or in the right direction. There were so many great memories this year, and you know, obviously, we're disappointed tonight. But you know, we're not going to let this kind of take away from you know a remarkable season. Yeah, I think he pretty much just hit the nail on the head. You know, um, this is de something we definitely weren't looking forward to. But you know, um, looking back, it was a long journey, and I think all the guys, you know, kind of appreciate Coach Cos and Coach Dykes coming in and just um, showing us the ropes of you know how to be um, a winner. And you know, we're excited to have them for the next couple of years. And I'll, I'll say this to add, add to, to add to that, too. I, I think, you know, as Max said, I mean, look, a, a loss like this stings. Um, but, you know, we talked about this a little bit in the locker room a second ago, just about, you know, how far we've come in a year and what, what these guys have been able to accomplish, really, when nobody outside of our locker room expected it or really believed in them. And they always believed in themselves and they always – rolled their sleeves up and worked incredibly hard and competed every single second of every day. And you couldn't ask for more than that. And again, I'm disappointed that we didn't make a better showing tonight because that's not indicative of who we are. But, uh, but, but we'll look back. It's going to take some time for the sting to go away, I assure you. But we'll look back on the season and, and build on it from here. Any other questions for our student athletes right down here in the front? A uh, question for D and Max both. Mac Engel from the Fort Worth Star Telegram. Guys, were they that much better than you? That uh, that outcome we were not expecting at all. Were they that much better than you? I got it. I got it. Yeah. Um. You know, defensive boys. You know, uh, they didn't really do anything special. You know, we kind of just beat ourselves up. You know, um, they kind of just executed on our misalignments and just uh, kept scoring on those things like that. You know, um, we just kept beating ourselves up. You know, um, just overthinking trying to uh, run uh, too fast to the ball and things of that nature. Yeah, you know, they're a, they're a great team. Um, everybody knows how good they've been, you know, this year and, and prior years, and, and we knew that. I, I think tonight was was one of those nights where, you know, at least offensively, we 
could just we, we couldn't get anything rolling. They were playing well on defense. We were shooting ourselves in the foot. I was making bad decisions and I wasn't executing well, not putting us in a position to, you know, score score some points and you know move the ball. But um, you know they're a great team. Obviously, that's not what we thought was going to happen or you know wanted to happen or what we worked for. But um, yeah, it was just you know one of those nights where we couldn't really do much on our end. Take our next question for the student athletes over here on our right, fourth row back. Uh, Max and D, both of you guys, I know it's hard right now in this moment to kind of grasp it all, but when you look back at this team, what are you going to remember about the character and resiliency that you guys displayed just all season long? Yeah, I think um, that, that's the, the best thing about being part of a, of a football team, and especially this one. I mean, you know, long past this time, you know, we're probably not going to remember the wins and losses or, or stuff like that, but we're going to remember the men in that locker room, the guys that – you know, we got to grow up with that. You know, we learn more about, you know, when when, when stuff got tough um, and and things kind of got hard, you saw what type of men that we got in our locker room that I continue to fight, believe. Um, it, it's such a fun group to go to work with. You know, it's the little stuff that you got to remember about this season, you know, probably less about the, the wins and losses, but, you know, what, what great men we got. Okay, we've got our next question on the second row right here in the middle. Show Radio Associated Press. Max, how much was um, Georgia's pressure? Was that the most pressure that you've kind of seen all year in terms of how consistent and quick they were? I mean, they were good up front. Um, I don't know. I, I don't really know compared to um, stuff, you know, coming up in this year or, or this season. Um, they, they had some, you know, some blitzes, some pressures they got through. I, I held on to the ball a little bit too long. Um, wasn't getting through reads. You know, it was kind of causing trouble for the O-line myself. Uh, a lot was on kind of, you know, on me. But um, they had some good schemes. And I think, yeah, again, going back to, you know, the stuff that we were doing that, you know, we weren't executing well and they were playing well on their end. And, you know, that, you know, isn't a great recipe for success. Take our last question for the student athletes back here from Ivan, our right side. Uh, uh, for both players, you guys, this hasn't happened to you. How can you describe the feeling the frustration early in the game when you figured out what you're so good at wasn't there tonight. Um, yeah, you know, um, it was just something that we really haven't faced, like you said, you know. Um, but, you know, Coach Cos did a great job just trying to tell us, you know, the next play, always have that next play mentality, you know, just come out and just compete and, you know, um, go from there. Yeah, I think uh, when stuff when stuff like that happens, you know, you got to, you know, go back to your roots, go back to your values, the culture that, that we set. Um, I, you know, it was frustrating. You, you haven't been in a situation like that, but you know, you got to dig yourself out of a hole. You got to believe. Um, and, and I know going forward, you know, this program, you know, is going to get on the stage again. And you know, if we're ever in a situation like that, I know we're going to, you know, be able to get out of it, um, have some success. And you know, I'm, I'm pretty positive in that. Max D, thank you for your time. Congratulations on a great season. We'll let you head back to the locker room now, and we'll transition thank to questions for Coach. Start right down here in the very front. On our right side, Coach. Steven Johnson, Fort Worth Star Telegram. Sonny, you said you guys are going to kind of sit down and evaluate what's next. I guess, is there any value you can take from this game and kind of showing you and the staff how far, how much further you guys need to go to kind of really become a championship program? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, that's, that's the good thing about, I think, our program and really our coaching staff and – you know, the world will look in the mirror. It's kind of what I told our players afterwards. We've got to look in the mirror, and it all starts with me and then works works down from there. And, you know, the, the thing that we did, we had a formula that worked, uh, you know, where we played pretty well for 14 straight weeks, you know, and uh, we, we carried the same formula into this game. We didn't do anything different. There was, noth there was no preparation that was any different. There was no um, – I didn't have any sense that our players were in a different place. You know, their preparation was good. There was zero difference between, um, you know, preparation for this game than there was for the Michigan game, you know, 10 days ago or nine days ago, whenever that was. And so, you know, I, I think what happens sometimes is you, you know, you get on a run like we've been on. You play a lot of games like we played this year that are, emotional games and games that you put put everything you have into it to win it 
Uh, you did it nine days ago against, again, a, a Michigan team where we had to, you know, had to hold on and fight and scratch for every inch uh, against a very good football team and found a way to win and get out there tonight. And, you know, Georgia did a great job, got off to a fast start. You know, we answered, cut it to 10 to 7, and then for whatever reason, it went downhill from there. And so we'll sit down as a staff and, you know, begin trying to figure out what happened tomorrow, you know, and, and uh, make sure it doesn't happen again and learn from it. I think that's the, the best thing that, that happens when you face adversity like this. You make mistakes and you learn from them and you, you get better as a program, you get better as a coach, you get better as players, and, and the next time you handle the situation a little bit better. But... Our preparation was really good. You know, I thought we had, you know, two of the better practices when we were in full pads that we had had all year. And to be able to have those, and it was week 22 for us, I believe, to, to, uh, for the players to practice like they did 22 weeks into the season, it's a real credit to those guys. And, again, I don't know what happened tonight. We ran into a really good team, and we did some very uncharacteristic things, and it snowballed on us, and that hasn't happened to us one time this year that we hadn't been able to fight our way back and, and figure out a way to to get back in the game or win the game. Um, and we weren't able to do it tonight. So we'll self-evaluate and make corrections and go from there. We're going to go all the way down here in the very front. Jamie Plunkett, Frogs today. Coach, you mentioned that this thing is going to last for a little while and that you're going to get back to work evaluating on this tomorrow. But – when you think about how you carry a season like this into the future for this program, what's the next month or so look like for you as you uh, put a plan together to do that? Yeah. Yeah, look, our guys have been going, you know, we've been practicing pretty much since um, the end of July, you know, and, and we have a bunch of young people that are 18 to 22 years old uh, that have really poured everything they have into it. You know, they've been home one weekend since uh, the football season started, you know, to see their family. Um, and so these guys have paid a lot into to this run and to having this kind of success. They've given everything they have, made a ton of sacrifices. You know, we start school here pretty quickly. So, you know, we've got a good plan on how to, to give our guys some rest. We have a, a significant group of newcomers that, that start school uh, that actually report tomorrow, believe it or not, show up on our campus and go through orientation, start moving in the dorms tomorrow. Uh, so, you know, no rest for the weary, you know, we'll get back. We'll, um, start, you know, helping those players get settled and, and they'll start week, uh, start school a week from Tuesday and, and here we go. Uh, so, you know, we've got to give these guys a little bit of a break. It'll be a little bit different schedule maybe than it normally is because of that. You know, we'll wrap up recruiting, still have, um, you know, three or four recruits that we're, we're chasing and, and hopefully, uh, get those guys on board and, just continue to build and, and learn from tonight and, again, make sure that it doesn't happen again. Go back down here in the front, right in the very front. Coach, Derek Leto, KillerFrogs.com. Can you just describe what this entire run has done for our city of Fort Worth and, you know, the university in general? Yeah, yeah, you know, that's, that's one of the things that's most disappointing. I mean, look, you hate it for your players, you hate it for your fans that, Traveled all the way to L.A., you know, I mean, they've really invested in our program. I know it's, I know flights were expensive. I know tickets were expensive. I know all of it was hard to do. And, and our fans answer the call every single time we ask them to do something. They've done it. And, um, you know, we're all very appreciative. We're disappointed for them. We feel like we let them down uh, with our performance tonight. Um, you know, we certainly wouldn't be where we are without them and, and wish we would have, uh, you know, represented TCU and the football program better tonight than we did. Uh, but again, we're proud of proud of what we've done. Proud of them. Appreciate their support of us. It's been a it's been a fun year. It's been a long year. Um, you know, I think I think all of us probably need to try to catch our breath uh, tomorrow and and um, you know get back to the grindstone here pretty quickly. I'm going to take two last questions. I've got Ivan back here, and then we'll come to the front. Uh, Sonny, you use the word uncharacteristic it just what uh, yeah what's at the top of that list that y'all did that was yeah uncharacteristic? yeah you know it's interesting Ivan I mean we you know you look at early in the game and we really you know protected the quarterback well when we dropped back to throw um 
you know, it got worse as the game went along, and, and our, our threat of running the football consistently went away. Um, but, you know, we felt pretty good after a series or two that we could drop back and we could throw the ball, and, and you know, we could create some things offensively. Felt like that we could also run the ball. We just dug such a big hole for ourselves. We never could quite get them stopped defensively. We never could get out of our own way on offense. You know, first play of the game for us was a false start. We probably have had three false starts all year. You know what I mean? In, in probably over a thousand plays, may, maybe had three false starts. First start, first play of the game, we have a false start tonight. So, you know, just things like that. You know, that's just not who we are. We're not that kind of football team. If we make those mistakes, we're, we're, we're not going to win football games. We're certainly not going to be playing for a national championship, uh, making those kind of mistakes. And, you know, I thought we, uh, we had some busts defensively, uh, some alignment busts, some assignment busts. We cut some receivers loose. Again, that's not been something that we've done. Um, you know, I think in some ways our guys, you know, we got in the locker room a little bit before the game. You could sense some tension in the room. You know, and we've got to try to, to, um, to not have that. You know, we haven't had that in the past. We've been pretty loose, and the guys were really excited to play, really fired up to play. I thought we were probably just a little too fired up, maybe a little too emotional, and as a result, you know, did some things that we don't normally do. I just don't think we were in the state of mind that we needed to be in, and we've got to do a better job trying to get our players there, and, and uh, uh, obviously – failed in that regard and again we'll learn from this mistake and and hopefully address it and make sure it doesn't happen again last question right here in the middle second row uh, Chris Rim, the New York Times did you did you feel like well earlier you said you talked about preparation and how the things are working for 14 weeks so did you feel like I'm not sure if you were saying this but did you feel like you you should have altered from that for this game and I, you know I don't know I, I think it worked for us in the past you know what I mean and and did you have a second part to that question if you did I'd mean to cut you off but I, but I, let me just say this I I felt like that you know we had had success we had played probably close to our capabilities you know throughout the run that we went on uh, this year and um, and you know um, we didn't want to change that we felt like it had kind of got us to this point as a program and we didn't really want to change it and we were comfortable with that with that preparation style go, go ahead and finish yeah, yeah i was gonna say and do you feel like this loss taught you anything about what you need to do as a coach to prepare yeah yeah team? for sure yeah i mean certainly i mean we're certainly sit down as a staff and you know watch the film talk about go through every single call we made in the game and you know and say okay look why why didn't this work what why did where did this go wrong what could we have done better um you know, and, and talk, to our, talk about preparation. Talk to some of our players, get some feedback from, from those guys about how they felt coming into the game. If we felt like there was too much in the game plan, not enough in the game plan. You know, just all those things. I know leading up to today, I know our guys felt very comfortable about the preparation. Felt like it was um, as good as we had had. As I said, the practices were very good. Uh, felt like the game plan was good coming in. And, you know, clearly it wasn't – what it needed to be, and clearly we didn't execute it the way we, we wanted to. Coach, thank you very much. Okay, really appreciate you. your time.